Hello mechanics! Today we're going to be looking at a very basic introduction to making mods, so this video is for absolute beginners who have never made a mod before. We're going to be learning what exactly JSON is, so even if you're an experienced mod maker, this video will help you to avoid some common mistakes that a lot of people make. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. But don't worry, you don't actually need to remember that. It just means that it's a way to define objects for a programming language called JavaScript. The data structure is so useful that other programming languages and even games like Scrap Mechanic can use it. So here are the basic parts to a JSON file. There are curly brackets, square brackets, string variables, numbers, and a true or false value. How all of these parts fit together are super important, but it's actually quite easy once you get it, and you will be able to create your own mods without any errors in no time. Let's start with numbers, since that's really easy and everyone should know how they work. Numbers are, well, they're numbers. You have 7, 0 0.4, negative 2, those are all numbers, and that's what you can use to give a value to something, or add to a list of numbers. Numbers are just numbers, and they are not in quotations. So one example is setting the density value for a block. Just put in the number and you've set the value for density. True and false values are also really easy, they are just like numbers, but there's only two options, true or false. We'll take a look at some examples later on. String variables, on the other hand, are anything that needs to be in quotation marks. You can think of them like names, words, or values that you can't represent using numbers. So you might see a color code in quotations, or a file name, or the name of a game variable that you want to give a value to. String variables are just things that need to be in quotations because they aren't a number and they aren't a true or false option. Square brackets are a list, so whenever you see square brackets, that means that it's a comma-separated list of values. For example, you can create a list of numbers, or a list of string values. The important part to keep in mind is that square brackets are just a list of values, and they define the start and end of the list. The order of the items in a square bracket list is usually very important, because programs will check to see which is the first item, which is the second item, third, and so on. So do keep that in mind, the order of a square bracket list is usually important. Curly brackets are also a list, but it's a special kind of list. Every value in a curly bracket list needs to have a name. So everything inside a set of curly brackets will be a name, a colon, and then the value. Curly bracket lists are a type of list where the order does not matter, and that's because the program can just look for the name to get the value. So the name defines the property, the thing that we're going to give the value to. Then there's a colon, and then we put in the value. And that's the same for every single item in the list. So we have the name, the colon, and the value for every item in a comma-separated list. And that's it! These are all the parts that make up a JSON file. And one interesting thing about these parts is that each of these parts can be the value for an item. So you can have a true or false value, a number value, a string value, or even a list as a value for something. Another interesting part about JSON files is that you'll notice they start and end with curly brackets. These are the curly brackets for the JSON file itself. Because a JSON file starts with curly brackets, it is a list with names. We're going to be listing all the things that make up a mod block or part inside these brackets. Let's take a look at an example of a JSON file from Scrap Mechanic. This is blocks.json, the file that defines the blocks in the game. Like all JSON files, the entire file will start and end with curly brackets. This also means that the entire JSON file is a curly bracket list with names and values. The first item in the curly bracket list has the name block list, then a colon, and then its value, which itself is a square bracket list. And this is the only item in the main set of curly brackets. This is a basic setup for a JSON file for blocks in the game. And inside the square brackets, we list the blocks that we want to use in the game. So the first thing you might notice is that 
every block in the block list is, in itself, a curly bracket list. A list of blocks is just a list of curly bracket items. And each block is defined with a few things. A UUID, three texture files, and some basic properties for what the block is. Some of this stuff is optional, while the UUID and textures are mandatory. You cannot have a block without the UUID and textures. Let's take a closer look at what a block is made of. You'll notice this item called Legacy ID, and you can ignore this as you will never need this to create your own mod. This is just something the game uses for backwards compatibility from very old blueprints. The new ID system is a UUID. Anytime you want to define a new block or part, it needs a UUID, so the game can use in blueprints and to tell which block is used and where it is used. So to give your block a UUID, you define UUID as the name of the property you want to give the value to, and then a string value. Inside the string value, you put the custom UUID for your block. Don't worry, you don't actually have to know what a UUID is. All you need to know is that it's a special kind of number. Just like the old ID system, it's just a number to say which block is which, except this new system is a string since it contains numbers and letters. I'm going to leave a link in the description down below to a website where you can generate new UUIDs that you can use for your own mods. It's kind of like a random number generator for UUIDs, so it will come in handy when creating your own parts. Next, the block is going to need some textures. So we define a diff property, and the value is a string of the file location to the diff texture for the block. An ASG property, with the value pointing to the file of the ASG texture. And a NOR property, with the string value pointing to the normal map texture. We'll be covering textures a little more in another tutorial video, for those that want to know what each of these textures do. For now, we're just looking at the structure of a JSON to get you guys started. So far, we've seen the UUID and textures used by the block. Each of these items are separated by a comma, since this is all in a curly bracket list. Let's take a look at some of the other properties that can be used for blocks. The color property should be pretty self-explanatory, where we define the color code for the block. This is the default color for the block before it's painted in-game. Next we have the density property, and this takes a number value where we define how heavy the block is for one cubic meter of blocks. The tiling property is used to define how many blocks the texture takes up, which also takes a number value. For example, if the tiling value is 8, then the texture image repeats every 8 blocks. The image will be stretched out to be large enough to cover 8 blocks. If the value is 2, then it repeats every 2 blocks, and 1 would repeat for every single block. The physics material property is used to define how the block behaves in-game, most notably the sound it makes when hit with a hammer, spud gun, or colliding in general. Quality level is used to define the strength of a block if it can be destroyed with a spud gun, or how much damage it takes from explosives. And finally, we have one more property we can define for blocks, and this is the glass property, where we can tell the game if this block is glass or not. This property takes a simple true or false value with the default assumption that it's false. Like I mentioned earlier, some of these properties are completely optional. So even if you don't include the glass property for your block, the game will assume a false value. And that's just an example of a complete block in the JSON file. Remember that all of this is just the value in a comma separated list called block list. So if we want more blocks, we need a comma and another value in that list. Since we're making blocks, and we need to define lots of properties by name, the value is a curly bracket list. Looking at an existing JSON file like this is super useful and is the basics of creating mod in Scrap Mechanic. 
So for anyone looking to get started creating your own blocks or even parts for that matter, simply take a look through the game files because there are already perfect examples for you to work from. Say you want to create a new block, simply copy the code for the block into your own mods JSON file and get started by changing the UUID and other properties to make your block unique. So this concludes the basic introduction to what is a JSON file and is a great starting point to making mods in Scrap Mechanic. I know we didn't go too much into how to actually make custom blocks or parts. This video was just to teach you how the JSON file format works and will help you to avoid many common mistakes that people make when making mods. Of course, some of you already know how to make textures and 3D models. Or perhaps you want to make a mod that uses existing textures and models from the game, in which case you should already have everything that you need to start exploring the game files and mess around. But for others, don't worry about it as we'll be covering other topics in future videos, such as how to create the different texture files and put together custom blocks and parts. I know some of you are excited to begin creating your own mods, so I suggest you start practicing your JSON skills by copying some block code, maybe create a copy of some blocks with a new color or density value. For example, what does the metal block look like if you gave it the glass property? These are things that you can start playing around with so that when you're ready to create your own texture files, you'll be ready to put together your own custom blocks. So again, this was just a very, very basic tutorial to help you guys get started and to help you avoid making a lot of the formatting mistakes that people make. If you're ever making a mod and something doesn't work as expected, this video will help you to really look through your JSON file to see if there's anything missing, like usually a comma that's missing or maybe an extra comma at the end of your list. Maybe you forgot to close one of your brackets. It's always a very simple mistake and I hope that this tutorial is useful to you. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video, let us know what you want to see in the next tutorial down in the comments below, and subscribe for more Scrap Mechanic mods. See you next time!